Hello. Uh, it's uh, sort of dusky. It's almost nine o'clock uh, at night here in the Pacific Northwest. And um, we still have some daylight, so let's go outside. And uh, excuse me, Miss Lady. Yes. Uh, we're going to try this again. Um, I did a, a bit of footage yesterday as I was picking berries where I live. Uh, and and we talked about plants and and then the, the video footage. It's a long story. Didn't work. Uh, so let's uh, let's have a walk. I don't know what you're seeing. <laughs> I can't seem to figure technology out quite that well. Oh yeah, you're seeing me. Uh, yeah, this is me. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna pick some more sage. This is my thirsty sage bush. I'm gonna try to do a cutting this year and transfer a bit closer to the house so that um, I can keep it watered a little better. But I've just been taking some of these more thirsty looking leaves. And um, I've been drying them for use in the coming year. I've always been kind of wary of using sage just because there's a lot of, um, oh, I don't know, ethnic misappropriation and stuff that people can associate with it. And, um, yeah, I, I am not quite exactly for sure with where I'm at with a lot of the politics of plants but um I do I do respect and honor what it is for different peoples and um I guess long story short uh this grows where I live um and I I feel like it's a gift and I feel like to not use it is actually quite uh disrespectful as well so um yeah, I, I'm going to uh, gratefully use what is being offered. It's important that we remember what grows near us and and why. Uh, that video I made talking about the oregano blossoms uh, also mentioned a, a lady, a fellow customer at the herbal sh the apothecary, G a gypsy's whimsy in Astoria, who was talking about finding, I can't remember if it's called Heal All or Self Heal, uh, but it's that kind of balmy looking uh, plant that I showed you growing in my gravel. And um, so the, the thing that I didn't tell you is that, that the lady that uh, found this medicinal plant growing on her property uh, found the plant just prior to receiving um, a cancer diagnosis. Uh, so when I think his name is Dave, but it might not be. Uh, when the when the gentleman at the shop made the comment about, um, you know, just being being aware of what grows near you, and and sort of pay attention to why it is that it grows near you, um, you know, we might not even know yet why I found the oregano. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, when I had it in the house for a couple of days, I, for some reason, it, it occurred to me to start just curiously Googling about um, spirits and summoning angels. And I've, I've worked with doing stuff like that before. It's sort of that fun dabbling that people of a certain mind type, uh, I think, get into at eventually and um so I had just thought of, of maybe perhaps trying to do that again um and uh for whatever reason stumbled upon reading about an archangel that's not talked about a whole lot his name is Uriel uh anyway 
one thing led to another, and I found out that Uriel is a fan of uh, oregano. <laughs> so it's, it's just beautiful. I don't know where it came from or, or why it occurred to me to want to pick in a, a bouquet of oregano. I, I've never read about that in a story or, you know, a lot of these crazy ideas that, you know, that I, I come up with these things and it's like, oh yeah, I, I remember now I, I sort of read something like that in a story or heard about something like that and morphed it a little but um there's absolutely no reason why I should think of oregano bouquets <laughs> and absolutely no reason why that stuff should be growing as it's growing uh, it's just it's wonderful I don't know it's wonderful thank you Uriel if you're here <laughs> I'm picking these little blackberries these are um I can't remember if they're a European or if they're a native variety, but they are not the kind that are um, found in the Asian continent. Um, the, the Asian continent native berries are, are very large. Their vines are um, also much larger than these. Um, they're pretty invasive. I think I already said that, but, uh, yeah, they, I think they ripen. They tend to ripen a little later in the season than these. These ones will flush up after the salmon berries. The salmon berries are those big, beautiful pink. They're not a raspberry. They're more peach colored than a raspberry. Um, but they're a wild berry that grow out here too. And I can show you what their foliage looks like. In just a moment, but the salmon berries are usually the first, and they do not stick around for long. Um, and and these really don't either. So I've been trying to come out since I've noticed them, and just take a snack. This uh, little patch that I have found actually goes back quite a ways, and there's a um, a bit of a path. Um, you can kind of see it go by, beyond this log and it, it kind of seems to be a grazing trail that some sort of beasties have made. So I don't want to take all of their snacks, but as you can see, there is quite a bit to go around and there will be for a while. There's a lot of pink left. Um, and you saw me picking off of the little pink huckleberry bushes. Um, these ones with the little, the red foliage and the little red berries are my favorite huckleberries that grow in this area because I grew up in high altitude where black huckleberries, um, people that grow up in areas like that, black huckleberries have a certain quality to them if you're going to call yourself a huckleberry and be that color you cannot taste like the black huckleberries <laughs> you're not allowed <laughs> to taste like the black huckleberries that grow at low altitude it's really a sad day but these pink ones um their foliage is as much more delicate than the uh, like this is a this is a purple huckleberry that'll grow in my area so the foliage is, is much thicker it's more sturdy um, but their berries look the same and they have the same little skirt on the bottom of them. They grow in more of a clump than one at a time, like on these little red, red berry bushes. I'm trying to get back into this tangle because there's a little patch in here. Um, I'm also going to take some leaves because blackberry and raspberry leaves um, are very nutritious and these are out in my wild environment where I live um, so they have like a biome on them and they have all kind of stuff that I want they have uh, done their photosynthesizing under the same light that I do my vitamin D uh, thing, so the radiation, I don't know if it really has anything to do with anything, but I just like it. I like eating the food that, I like eating food that has uh, lived in the same place that I, I do. I like to share, you know. It's kind of funny the way 
uh, berry picking makes my brain think about the future because, you know, sometimes we'll discover that the berries are ripe kind of a little bit late in the game and um, we'll kind of, we'll get maybe one or two uh, flushes of, of like a harvest before they're done. Whereas other times we luck out and we we find them early or just as they're becoming ripe. And, and every time we come out, I, I like to kind of promise that I'll be back. You know, I see that you have lots of pink berries still. I will be back when they are ripe. You know, I, I, I just think that uh, all of my growing things, whether it's in my fish tank or my garden or uh, my house plants, like they're all incredibly, uh, they, they, they change, they do better, they're, what is the word? Like they're responsive. If I'm not around, um, they don't seem to do as well. And it's not because, as best I can tell, it's not because they're, they need me to water them every day or they need something done every day. It's, it's because I think they just like us to come back later for more. They, they like us to be around. I've got a kitty friend who's that way. He doesn't like to be alone all the time, but it really doesn't take a lot of touching for him to have his fill of touching. And then these berries, see these all over the place. These are called salal, and they're kind of a fuzzy berry, but they have the same flavonoids and flavor compounds that uh, like a blueberry will have that remind us of um, like the flavonoids and the flavors in gin and certain things that are... Um, uh, fermented things as well as like these dark pigmented fleshy fruits um uh, when I say fermented things I mean like fermented plants uh we'll do this flavor thing where um it's a umami so it's kind of beefy and savory while also being sweet and sort of juicy and and uh so um <clears throat> the uh the flavor compounds and blueberries taste really good paired with fermented sort of piney what are they are they juniper berries that they make with that they do in gin anyway Blueberries, salal, some black huckleberries, especially if they're the highland variety. They all have that kind of sappy flavor, and it's a plant flavor. It's not the same umami flavor as like a black tomato or, um, but, but it has that component in it. Um, uh, so the, the salal berries and the blueberries will taste really good if we want to mix them in with our, uh, preserves, uh, with some gin or, um, even if you wanted to take just a little bit of like a pine needle or something like that to just infuse some forest flavor, it would really taste good. And the salal, um, have these glossy, beautiful, big, broad leaves, more little, Dainty huckleberries. Um, here's some more, a different kind of vining berry. Um, so here's uh, a salmon berry vine, kind of a little bit wider of a leaf. We've got a bit of a reddy brown on the stem. They aren't quite as prickly sometimes. I don't know, that's not fair to say. Their prickles are different, but. Um, yeah, they have this beautiful bright pink fuchsia uh, blossom that comes out super early, but that's a salmon berry. Um, I don't know what you are. Uh, so, yeah, we got some berry leaves, we got some berries, we got some sage, 
Look at that fun little loop de do. Good hidey hole for somebody. All kind of ferns. Hi, ferns. How are you today? So, yeah. Sun's starting to go down. That way's the west. I can hear the ocean. I don't know if you can. The lighting is just fantastic right now. I like this guy. I think he's a hemlock. Oh. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Oh, this is not Kinnikinnik. I don't know what you are. These glossy little leaves. Kanikanak is a ground cover that has little kind of shiny, glossy, rounded leaves like this, but it's a climber and it'll have berries and yellow flowers. But this is something altogether different. I've lived in this area for a long time and I don't know that I've noticed that plant. We have orchids that grow here. This isn't the right time of year for it. I'll have to point one out to you, but they grow everywhere in these little foresty patches. In the Pacific Northwest, everybody thinks orchids are these exotic, <laughs> far, far away things. You know, I was going to go to the beach to collect sticks, but I think I could probably just collect sticks from home. For uh, Mr. Blue really wants to explore the tree fort, but Prudence has made it clear to him that that is a no guys allowed. Like That is her tree fort, so... We're going to have to pop one up for him. I think I'm going to have to make the entrance leaving the bedroom because that's his sanctuary. No girls allowed. I think I've picked this one pretty well between the birds and I. I don't know what this is. I really, I almost think it's a kind of fruit tree, but I almost also think it's a kind of butterfly bush. But if it was a butterfly bush, it wouldn't be this small, and I think it would have flowers. I just don't know. There's more of him over there. Oh, there's more red berries, too, but I don't want to squish things. It starts getting quiet in the dusky hours. I haven't like going crashing through things when it starts getting quiet. Everybody's, everybody out here is trying to mellow down, you know, wind down from the day. And, you know, I can respect that. Oh. Careful falling in holes when you're walking in the woods, because it might be somebody's house. I just love these. The, um, the little, the blackberries we're picking... I talked a little bit about umami on a, like a dark skinned fleshy tomato so that the little like heirloom purple or, or they say that they're black, but it's a, it's like a purple, just the, the berry, um, what is it? It's not pigment. It's not mel melanin. Anyway, the, the, the coloring that come with those umami, uh, or those darker flushed tomatoes, they, they actually do. They have a measurably uh, stronger uh, sort of quotient or quantity of, of that profile because of that dark color. And we also find that berries, um, like the ones I just picked, I'm going to go back for more, uh, are very high in antioxidants as well as those beautiful complex flavor chemicals um so just berries are, are a superfood i talked a little bit about superfood earlier as far as the thing that makes a superfood a superfood is going to be the really the the quantities of vitamins and antioxidants and micro macronutrients and like the proportions that they come in so you're really getting the most bang for your for instead of buck like your cup like you're serving 
Um, and, and these little blackberries are, they're like taking a multivitamin. It's really, I don't know. I just, I'm in kind of an emotional, weird place. I've been in flux and today it's almost like I'm starting to let go or something's shifting. Anyway, I just feel very emotional. I just want to cry because it's, um, we find these things growing near us. They're just such incredible gifts. I, I just feel so spoiled. I just feel so, uh, it's almost like, uh, I have to force myself to be really cynical. Cause if I, if I wasn't, I, I'd be walking around like a seven-year-old stuck in a Walt Disney movie reenactment in her head. Like, I just... <laughs> and I know it's, it's, it has its, its baggage and, and, and all that, but, like, that, that animated uh, version of, of <laughs> just called Pocahontas, like, I, I would just... I would end up... If I didn't force myself to grow out of that from the first day I saw that movie until now, like I'd I'd be running around singing at the waterfalls and you know, talking to the hummingbirds and shit. Like if I didn't force myself to grow up and get, you know, super cranky and defensive and scared, I think I'd I'd still be that that little kid pretending to be Pocahontas. <laughs> I I just I don't know and it's like I've tried so hard to do the right thing and be a grown up and I've had office jobs and I, I had the Costco card and <sighs> I've had a savings account with money in it <laughs> I, I've tried really hard and it, I just feel like the harder I try to not be that little girl, but, um, the further I get from this place and the further I get from the gratitude that I feel when I can pull food from where I live, the harder I try to grow up, it's like I, uh, I force myself out of a nest too soon, you know. I know it's a bad metaphor. Nests are, are meant, nest metaphors are meant for growing up and out and individuation and becoming your own person. But I think that there's a sense of home that we're never supposed to grow out of. And I think that there's a... I think there's a vast well of love all around us. And it doesn't come in the forms that that we thought it would because we watched too many Disney movies. Or we just weren't watching the right ones. I don't know, guys. Like, uh, go outside. Next time you get a chance, just go outside and feel, feel what this feels like. I just. Try to remember what it felt like when you were seven years old and you were outside. If you were as lucky as I am and you got to see the ocean for the first time before you were ten years old, <laughs> just remember what that felt like. And if you didn't get that, just imagine what that would feel like to your little pre-10 years old self to see the ocean for the first time in person to be there to feel that to hear that I 
I know it's really cheesy, but even the most cynical redneck shotgun toting guy sits in nature and fights the lump in his throat because of how much he loves it and how much he can feel the the appreciation. Please come back for more. Please come back later. Please come back. We have our safe nests that we can go back home to, that we can sleep in. But as soon as we're able, and sometimes it takes work to make it happen, but as soon as we're able, guys, we need to go outside. We need to go back outside. 